Hey everyone, just had a few requests for some video or photos for the Fox 3000 launch dolly. <clears throat> so we'll um, just start at the front. And one of the most important things is we've done a lot of testing and you definitely need large wheels. Small wheels with the weight of the aircraft uh, just do not roll good enough. Um, we, you have to let this thing get along the ground without much resistance. And the large wheels certainly do make a difference. The centre point for the aircraft's wheel, as you can see, is slightly behind the axle for the main wheels. It's all built of timber. There's no aluminium. You can use aluminium if you want to. You could use a single beam back to the rear if you want to. Also, you will notice that we have a little ramp that helps the aircraft tail lift off so that it doesn't, in any of the tail or the rear fuselage doesn't hit the brackets at the front and do any damage. And as you can see, the little tail wheel just sits in between and the pieces up the side, of course, just stop it from sliding off sideways. During the process of development, you'll notice this pad here was the original, just to stop the aircraft tipping forward and also to help push the dolly along. We found that if you open the throttle too quickly, it would tend to nose over and the prop would touch the grass because the moment back to the rear wasn't being used to help it stay on the ground. So what we found was if we added this piece out the front so that the aircraft couldn't tip over and the rear and be, the counterbalance over the axle from to the back wouldn't allow the dolly to go forward either so it's, it's basically saved you can almost open it full throttle now to get off the ground from the start but we found that just nice progressive opening one two three seconds to full throttle and as you will notice by the videos it just gets airborne beautifully another thing with the large wheels is you get a really good angle of attack so basically there's no elevator needed and all we're using is about half flap no elevator and it just launches beautifully by itself the rear no 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 wheel of any description all we have is a little ramp for it to slide on the grass and this has been tremendous because you're not getting a wheel bouncing on the grass and also it allows it to be able to steer with the rudder of the aircraft just a little burst of power and it just slides the rear round as well in, into, into wind or so, a bit of a crosswind it won't track correctly of course but you know you just bend down pick it up straighten it up so that's fine uh, on the front what I have done is I've built a little suspension system in. So the brackets, if I can get down here, you'll notice the brackets are slotted where the axle goes through. And I just have a block with two pieces with a, two pieces of perspex that I just had here. And um, if I can just get that to go here. And so... We just have a little bit of suspension and you would be surprised how much difference that makes on the grass when you're taxiing out. This basically doesn't bounce the aircraft off. Um, a little bit of trial and error, but it's working and you can adjust the tension on that just by putting a little shim. You see notice the screw at the back, so you can screw that down a bit or a bit of block of wood under it. And you'll notice I've, I think I've got a little bit of block of wood under there. So I can just change the tension on the perspex to just give them the correct ride um, and doesn't damage the aircraft. It is just a fantastic dolly. It works, it steers, the plane lifts, it's easy. Just works really great. The other piece of aluminium on the front is just stop the, gra the grass from getting caught up in the back section and the little ramp. Uh, any more info? I think that's pretty self-explanatory. We'll just try and run this around a little bit. Basically what I'd used is just, I built kayaks out of plywood and um, 
just four or six mil ply. And what one of the secrets to these things when you're doing something like this is tack the plywood in place with CA, super glue. Just tack it in there, get it all set up, and then just put fillets in with some epoxy and cabosil or wood filler, whatever you normally use, um, and set it all up. And with the super glue, just put a few dots on it, and you can set the, sit the aircraft in there. Um, I'll just come around here a little. Sit the aircraft in there and um, just adjust, push, shove, do whatever you like, just get it see. But the angle of attack and the big wheels are really important. You can change the design if you want to, but you must have those big wheels. And that piece out the front, like a cantilever, just stops the aircraft tilting over and the back of the dolly stays on the ground and you just, as you've seen by the video, it's just fantastic. All the best. Just let me know how you go. After looking at the videos, I just decided I might add a little more. These pieces of timber that go to the back, you notice I've just used just nice little wood screws countersunk in there. Uh, also on the perspex, you see I've got two holes drilled. That was just to soften it a bit. I felt it was a little bit too stiff. T-nuts in the front, which allows you to take that off change the angle do what you like without it being glued and also on these side pieces just some nice little countersunk screws in there so i can take those off to change if i needed this bottom section here where it's really heavy and thick that was the original and i it's probably a, an overkill and the back section is an overkill i didn't really know what i what i needed so it was a, a real experiment at the start and I just decided to leave them there. Um, the only thing that I would change, and which I probably will change, is I probably wouldn't use black foam. If you can find white, I've noticed now that the, the fuselage is getting some black marks on it where it's rubbing, um, and, and it's almost impossible to get off. So uh, that's just a little bit of, bit of help for you, if you like. Um, it, it When it sits in there, it really... the front of the nose wheel, the, the, fly, the, the curve at the front really needs to sit on this section so that the aircraft, when it's sitting in there, is really snug, doesn't rock around. Sideways, it can have a little bit of clearance. You don't want it too tight because you don't want to jam and lift. But forward and back, you'll notice those little blocks. Um, I've put them in there and played, and I've just left them there. I probably should pull them off and, you know, put the proper size ones in. But it was basically all an experiment, and it... And it it just works. It is just unbelievable how it works. Um, the back also, I'll just show you. I just use <coughs> use some um, just some little stainless countersunk screws in there because it gets wet on the wet grass, so you don't want things going rusty. Of course, that's just a bit of. I think it's twenty five thou aircraft aluminium. I, I, I'm into the full size planes. Uh, I build those as well, but um, and I've got plenty of aluminium, but. Uh, I would suggest you use aluminium there if you can get it. It slides across the grass. It, it, you know, it's this thing has to slide across the grass easily. Uh, easily, you cannot have the aircraft trying to fight to get it to move, and that's one of the reasons for the big wheels as well. And I can't emphasise that enough. And also, don't forget to put some nice grease or oil or something like that on the on the wheels, so they just. They just, they just, they just need to spin. Just beautiful, like, like nice. Um, the bolts you'll notice here. I've, I've put two lots so I can move it forward and back. And I found um, the the rear holes were just a little bit too close to the CG of the aircraft, and and it wasn't putting enough weight on the tail, and it just did tend to want to lift the the, the, the rear of the dolly a little bit when you accelerate so I moved them forward um, and that's just actually where it is now is just perfect I'll just try and get that up I'll just I'll just tip it over a little for you and you can see roughly how far back it is from the actual position um, there's probably not I'll just put a couple of more pictures for you just might help you out a little uh, track wise I'll just grab a oops sorry guys I'll just grab a ruler I've just got one here somewhere 
300 mil, 12 inch. Yeah, that'll give you a rough idea. 12 inch ruler, 300 mil. That'll give you a rough idea. So looking at about 13, 13 and a half inches. Whatever suits you. You need a little bit of width in it. Um, not too wide that, that one wheel will tend to, if the wheel goes in a little bit of a rut, it'll just tend to kick it kick it round sideways a bit. But you need enough width so it, it doesn't topple over and it's stable. Anyway, um, that's the basic design. It works. If you want to change it a little bit, absolutely go ahead. It's it's all it's all a learning curve, uh, experimentation. But all I can say, and from the videos, it just works. Anyway, thanks guys. Catch you later. Thank you.